This is Wilson here again, and in this video, it's gonna be about Unit 9 Part 2, which is gonna be from Unit 9.3 all the way to 9.5. Now, let's start with the video then. Now, in the first part, I'm gonna be talking about blood and the blood vessels. Now, blood is composed of three parts one is the plasma. Which, which is the liquid part of the blood, and then it is the solid part of the blood, which contains all the dissolved salts, nutrients, urea, oxygen, and uh, as well as red blood cells, white blood cells, as, as, well, as well as platelets. Now, there are three different types of blood vessels. There's an artery, and there's a vein, and there's a capillaries. Here is a picture of a red blood cell. Now, a red blood cell is very, very special because it is of a biconcave shape. So basically, it's, it looks like a dish on both sides. Now the reason for this is that it it gives them a relatively large volume in the ratio to surface area. No, in the other way around, in like a fairly larger surface area in relation to their volume. So basically this increases their oxygen carrying capacity. Now it also doesn't have a nucleus. This is because the red blood cell needs to give more room for the hemoglobin which is the main chemical in the in the cell that, that combines with oxygen. It, they are quite small, about 7 micrometers across, and then they live for like a very, very short time, only about 4 months, but they are produced at a very, very fast rate, which is about 9 billion per hour. And then, the small size of the red blood cells also enables them to squeeze through even the tiniest capillaries. This means that oxygen can be taken in very close to every cell in the body. Here are, are white blood cells. Now, there are two different types of white blood cells. They are phagocytes and they are also lymphocytes. Now, lymphocytes works by secreting antibodies that combines with the antigens on the bacteria that gets into the body itself and then this helps the phagocytes to identify these bacteria and then their job is to basically swallow them now they work like this now here's a picture of a phagocytosis now the first step is that the phagocyte moves towards a group of bacteria that's been identified by the antigens secreted no by the antibodies secreted by the lymphocytes now the second part is the phagocyte cell membrane fuses together. So basically what they do is they first expand as in the second picture here and then they circulate around the group of bacteria. Basically now what it does is that it, it, it encloses all the bacteria in a vacuole. Now the enzymes are then secreted into the vacuoles and then it basically digests the bacteria. And then the fourth step which is the last step Soluble substances diffuses from the vacuole into the phagocyte cytoplasm. Now, basically, the after the bacteria or other things that have been digested, all its contents flow into the um, cytoplasm of the phagocyte. Now, useful substances such as amino acids are basically taken into use, and other waste products are basically excreted back into the blood. Now, here are platelets. Now, platelets are very small fragments of cells with no nucleus and they play a very, very important part in blood clotting. Now blood clotting is a very very special mechanism in the human body that stops pathogens from getting into the body via very very small cuts or, or injuries as well as it prevents blood loss. Here's two pictures of how exactly that's blood clot. In the first picture you can see that, that, that there's a cut in the um, and there's a cut in the skin and you can see that all these little black dots and little dots and some fibers which are the lines in between them they are platelets now these platelets they 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 group up in these cuts and then they sec and then they secrete a chemical which reacts and then it forms and then it causes the blood to clot now exactly how it does it is, is by this so basically in the blood plasma there is a soluble protein called fibrinogen. Now, the chemicals released by the platelets damages the tissues set off a chain reaction, which causes the fibrinogen to change into fibrin. Now, our scan, 
that usually form after the blood has already caught is made from fibrin. Fibrin is insoluble, so basically this makes it a very very good material to form clots because it is very very tough and it's not soluble and it can stay there for a very, very long time. So basically this is how it works. So basically the first step is the blood vessels are damaged and the blood contacts new surfaces, which is the air on the outside. And then the platelets become activated, which set up a chain reaction and activates blood clotting factors. Now this causes the fibrinogen to be catalyzed into fibrin. And the insoluble fibrin form fibers with trapped blood cells. So basically, you can see that all this... I'm going to make a full screen here. So basically, you can see that all these red blood cells trapped here is basically... Be, so basically, they are trapped by the fibrin made. And then this fibrin causes the platelets to stick together to form the new surface of the skin. And then a blood clot forms. It is pretty, pretty straightforward. So basically, the first step is a cut. Platelets activated. Sets of a chain reaction. Turns fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin traps blood cells along with platelets to basically cut off the wound from the outside. And then in, in, in time, a blood clot forms. Now this is pretty, pretty easy to understand. So basically here is a electron micrograph scanning how, what it looks like, what a blood clot looks like from up close. You can see that all this red stuff is red blood cells and these white thread-like structure are fibrin. So basically, they are trapping the right the red blood cells. Now here is a table of the main components that are taken in the blood. So basically, this fall under the factor of transportation in blood, which means that all the different substances that are useful for the body and also waste products that are transferred in the blood. Now water, it's pretty straightforward. Plasma proteins, including fibrinogen, lipids, fatty acids. Absorbing the ileum, which is in the small intestines, carbohydrates as well as uh, absorbed in the alimentary canal, excretory product substances including urea. Now these are made in the liver, and then they are all made in the cells as well. Then they are carried to the kidneys by the blood. Now the blood also contains mineral ions, including sodium ions, chlor 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 chloride ions, iron ions, all that kind of things. So basically, if they are in excess, then they are excreted by the kidneys. Hormones. Now, these are secreted, these are secreted into the blood by endocrine glands. Now, I'm going to talk about hormones in my next video, which is going to be on uh, Unit 13. It's going to be about coordination and, and response. Now, hormones only affect the target cell. So basically, uh, insulin hormone will not target, for example, like a nerve cell. They will only target cells that normally lowers down the blood glucose level. Now, hormones, after they have been used, they are broken down by the liver and then they are excreted in the kidneys. Now, the blood also contains dissolved gases. Now, these dissolved gases include oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and all different waste gases. Now, carbo carbon dioxide is normally dissolved in the plasma, but, but a small amount of them is also dissolved in the... is also dissolved in red blood cells. Now they are carried to the lungs, which then they are to, to be excretion. So basically, and, and most carbon dioxide is carried as hydrogen carbonate ions, HCO3 minus, in the blood plasma. Here is uh, basically components of the blood, which I've already talked about. The person is plasma, the liquid part of the blood, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Now here I'm going to talk about different kinds of blood vessels. Now I'm going to first of all talk about arteries. Arteries are the thickest blood vessel in the human body. Now they carry blood at very very high pressure because they have been pumped out of the heart, right? And they have very strong thick walls to withstand the pressure of the blood. Now the blood doesn't go along smoothly through the arteries. They pulse along. That's why you got your heartbeat and your pulse rate. Your heartbeat is the same as the pulse rate. It has a really, really re relatively small lumen, which is the lumen is the uh, hollow space inside the art inside the vessel. Now, our our pulse is measured using a sphygmo 
sphygmomanometer. So basically, it it uh, detects the amount of uh, coils and uh, stretches that uh, artery makes in a single minute, and then does does. And then the, also the arteries are made of very very elastic tissue, so they can stretch and recoil with the force of the blood. Now here are the capillaries. The reason that it didn't go along with the the um, the order such as artery, vein, and capillaries because the blood flow first goes from an artery into the capillaries, then back into a vein. That's always the 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 order which the blood are carried around in the body. Now the capillaries. They are the smallest vessels. Some of them are only one cell thick. It penetrates to every part of the body, and then not, not a cell is very very far away from a capillary. Now this these capillaries they deliver nutrients and carry away waste products. Now there's a there's a mistake there. Veins. Now veins have a relatively low pressure and carries deoxygenated blood. And arteries carry oxygenated blood. Now they have a very very now they have a fairly thin outer wall and have a very, very large lumen. This is because that much of the blood pressure has been lost in the veins, so there's no need for the veins to have very very th large walls. Now the veins also have very very also have valves in the vein. This is because that if you think about it, the blood is carried down to the feet by the artery, but then it needs to be taken upwards to the heart. Now, blood doesn't exactly just flow upwards against the force of gravity. Now, the the way that the veins does this, it has it has valves in the in the veins that once the blood flows past it, it closes to prevent the blood from flowing back. Now, the muscles in your limbs and also helps the veins to transport blood black. So because, for example, when you walk, your your veins in your uh, legs are squeezed by your quadriceps and, and hamstrings. This speeds up the transport of back back to the heart. Now the lumen in the uh, in the vein is very very large to basically help the blood flow because it's already very very slow. Now here is a list of all the major veins and arteries in your body. Now the only major ones you need to know are the pulmonary arteries and veins. The uh, hepatic artery and veins and the renal artery and the veins. Now the pulmonary is basically the vessels that takes the blood from the heart to the to the lungs. The hepatic artery is something to do with the liver. Hepatic means something to do with the liver. Renal is very very straightforward. Renal means something to do with the kidneys. Now there is a hepatic vein and there's also a hepatic portal vein. Now. The hepatic portal vein is a vein that connects the small intestines with the liver. This is because that every single nutrient absorbed in the body needs to be taken to the liver first to detoxify them. Now this is where the hepatic portal vein comes in. Now the hepatic vein and the artery is the vein and artery that connects the kidneys with the every part of the body else. Now basically the blood is first taken to the heart and then is taken to every part of the body. Now here we come to the last part of the unit which is called the lymphatic system. Now the lymphatic system is a network of vessels and capillaries that runs alongside the circulation system and carries tissue fluid. Tissue fluid forms because blood capillaries leak as, as it contains and it contains plasma and white blood cells. Now the tissue fluid surrounds every single tissue in the human body and it is the immediate environment around the body cells and it gives them a constant environment so basically allow them to work faster and more efficient. Now the reason for this is the capillaries, the walls of the capillaries do not fit, fit, exact, fit together exactly. They have very tiny holes in them and this causes the blood to leak out. Now white blood cells can also leak out because they can able to change their shape and squeeze out. Now the red blood cells are too big to pass through. Now here's a picture of the how the lymphatic system are presented. You can see that the that the tubes which contains the red blood cells are the blood capillaries 
And then you can see there are tiny holes in them. And the outside, there is a area marked by the blue and white dots. No, black dots. They, those are the tissue fluid. And you can see that there's a bunch of tissue in the middle. And then they are surrounded by the tissue fluid. And the fluid that, that are outside the capillaries, which contains plasma as well as white blood cells, are called lymph. And the, and, the, and the capillaries which contain these fluid are called the lymphatic capillaries. Now, here's a picture of how exactly does the lymph move in the vessels. Now, the lymph, first they leak out of the capillaries. They, they then gradually join up to form larger lymphatic vessels. And these carry the lymph to the subclavian veins which are in the arms, and which bring bring blood bring blood black back from the arms, and here the lymph enters the blood again. The lymphatic system has no pump to make the lymph flow, however, they do have valves in them. To make sure that the movement is only in one direction, lymph flows much more slowly than blood, and they are very close to the muscles. When and when the muscles contract. They help to squeeze the lymph vessels and help the lymph fluid and help the lymph to flow smoother. And from time to time, the lymph join up to form lymph nodes as illustrated by these black dots here. And this is where our white blood cells are formed. So basically, area around these black dots have a, ha, that have a lot of white blood cells. Okay, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys learned something from it. Uh, this is a very, very, fairly short topic, but it has a lot of content to remember, as you need to remember the structure of the heart, the valves in the heart, and how does the heart pump blood, as well as the blood, the blood vessels, and what does the blood do, what does it contain, as well as the lymphatic system. But all of this is very, very easy you, when you understand the main concepts, and you'll be, and you'll be able to elaborate them yourself by doing questions and then reading more and understanding more. Now my next video is going to be on Unit 13 which is going to be out by tomorrow I guess and then I'm going to split that into two parts as well and then I'll see you guys there. Goodbye.